How's it going everyone? I hope you're all doing well today. Uh, I wanted to take a look at the Scythe, which is the brand new DLC weapon that drops from the Mama Tick. Uh, it is the first ever dual slot item, which means that on your square and your triangle or whatever button layout that you use, uh, it occupies both slots. So when you unlock the left Scythe Claw and you turn your blueprints in and all that, you actually unlock the right Scythe Claw as well. It's a little bit weird, but that's essentially how it works. So the basic idea is that if you use a crit, if you use a hit on one, the other one gets a crit and, back, and it goes back and forth like that. So if you hit the left and then you do the right a little bit afterwards, then you get a crit on the right. And then you also get a crit on the left if you do it immediately after the right. So it kind of works like that. On the left can strike upwards and it's faster, whereas the right has more range, but is slower and does way, way, way more damage. So I'm going to be taking a look at when to use uh, either Scythe Claw, and I'm going to be taking a look at different mutations you can use, as well as the skills. This will be a little bit shorter because the Scythe is pretty straightforward in its usage, but there are some things that you want to remember. So with that, leave a like, subscribe for more Dead Cells content, and enjoy this guide everybody. So one of the main things that you can do is get really good hits off on elites and just enemies in general. So you can see, as soon as I drop down, I attempt to go for the hit because that gives me more time. So I aggro the shield bear and then I just go for the one quick strike on the rampager. And in this clip, what happens is that um, I see a blow gunner, I go for one hit and then I get the crit on that elite. So I wait until I'm behind to get the hit off. Uh, against this Rampager, same thing, and then against these two Dark Track Elites, I'm going to do one, and then two. Two easy kills right there. And against uh, these Eaters and then these uh, little Jerk Shrooms, I'm able to uh, use the range functionality instead of going for the crit. So it's really about just finding the appropriate time to use which one. Uh, something you want to remember and that you're about to see is that since the right scythe claw is slow but gets the crits, you can actually just maneuver your way around and then be able to get the crit off. So I use the sledge to be able to jump behind the rampager and then I can get the hit off from there. And that allows me to not only get behind but also create enough space and time for me to get that hit off. So that's something else that you want to keep in mind. Also, aggroing elites on 4 and 5 BC is a really, really nice thing to use with that left scythe claw in order to... Uh, get a hit off before they can even think about attacking you. So there are many different skills that you can use in combination with the scythe in order to maximize its full potential. Keep in mind that you're not running a shield because it's a double slotted item. So getting a skill that can make use of the fact that yeah, you can't run a shield, but you can do damage in other ways, or you can trap an enemy, or you can get them in position to where like you want to kill them uh just things like that and so the first thing i wanted to take a look at is actually the mushroom boy and so for those who don't know the mushroom boy is another brand new thing added in the bad seed dlc and it drops from i believe the jerk shrooms from the dilapidated arboretum and basically what it is it's like it's basically the survival component of the owl so it follows you around and it yeets itself and explodes when you trigger it. And then it's like a 30 second cooldown, pretty long cooldown, but um, it'll inter interrupt enemies attacks and like push them towards a wall. And it gets a lot of kills like that. So in some of the clips that you can see, Mushroom Boy is doing a lot of help in terms of just like allowing me to not have to deal with the slowness of the scythe. Because for as good as the scythe claw is, it tends to be slow. So having something like the Mushroom Boy that can interrupt attacks and save you from being hit is incredibly important. And in addition, it can also explode and take care of giant mobs for you, like when you can't see something due to a mask or something like that. Another mutation that I'm a really big fan of, or actually another skill that I'm a really big fan of, is the stun grenade. Uh, the stun grenade is better used in biomes than against bosses, obviously, because bosses can't really get stunned like that. But what the stun grenade does is you throw it at a mob, and then all the enemies around it will be stunned for about... Uh, two seconds two to two and a half seconds and most of them have an affix especially uh plus 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 and s tier items there's an affix that'll basically say stun duration plus 50 percent so that's uh 1.5 times more the stun rate 
which is incredibly useful when trying to hit more powerful enemies like the giant tick as you can see or for like different mobs and elites and things like that so that allows you to get both hits off both the left and the right scythe claw and then you can get your crits off that way and it'll really allow you to uh, get out of a sticky situation plus it also gives you damage reduction by about uh, i think it's like between two to ten percent or something like that uh just depending on the grade of the item so that's also really useful uh, another one that you can use is the wolf trap uh the wolf trap kind of works similar in the similarly in the stun grenade as in you can get some separation from enemies and then use both the scythe claws in order to mitigate that the amount of hits that you might take um it does really really well against bosses uh, against elites uh, the only bosses that it doesn't work as well at is Giant and Conjectivius and probably uh, Mama Tick. But Mama Tick's a different thing just because she's always in one spot. So you don't need to worry about her that much. But Conjectivius and Giant uh, have a little bit of more trouble with the Wolf Trap than other bosses. Um, and in general, bosses tend to break out of the Wolf Trap a lot. Uh, especially Hand of the King and the 5 BC Spoiler Boss. But it is just enough time for you to be able to get at least one or two crits off. And that, that's incredibly valuable at the end of the day. Uh, the next uh, skill that I want to talk about is the Telluric Shock. I'll make this really quick. Uh, I like this more than the Powerful Grenade with this particular uh, weapon. So the Powerful Grenade and Telluric Shock are extremely similar. But the Powerful Grenade has a big area of effect. But Telluric Shock's area of effect is more. And it does just does a better job of dealing with mobs and things like that. Um, I, for bosses, both are okay. Um, I think there are better uh, items that you can use, such as the Death Orb or Wolf Trap. But uh, I think like they they're serviceable against bosses too. Uh, in biomes, they're absolutely fantastic. But I think the Telluric Shock is generally better because um, just because of the slower nature of the scythe. If you um, if you accidentally like hit in the wrong direction or something like that or if like a failed experiment jumps behind you you can activate the telluric shock and you can actually hit enemies from uh in front of you and below you in a really really big range and the powerful grenade only does a little bit behind you and a lot in front of you if that makes sense next up is one that i think is incredibly important for bosses and that's the death orb so the death orb basically it releases well an orb and it'll hit a bunch of enemies uh, and it has like a big uh, travel path and it stuns enemies as well. So that's also incredibly important. Um, I think this is uh, really good for mob management because it'll, again, it'll stun the enemies and then just put you in a position where you don't necessarily have to get hit. Against bosses, I actually, it's my personal favorite survival skill to use against bosses just because of the fact that it isn't just like a one-time use like the powerful grenade or giant swiss or something like that. Um, I really, really enjoy it. Wolf Trap also works really well with Death Orb because you can trap the enemy and get them locked up in the Death Orb for a while and just start smacking them with the uh, Scythe Claw. Um, Crusher is also really good. You saw that with the Wolf Trap. Crusher, basically, if you trap them, uh, you'll have them in position to get hit by the Crusher, and the Crusher does a lot of damage. The trick with Crusher is getting them in position to get hit in the first place. And, yeah, in general... Uh, trying to just get a good amount of damage off on bosses using your skills and using them really as support rather than the main source of damage because the side class is going to do enough damage but the skills will really really help support the scythe claw and maximize its damage output uh the last one that does a great great job of this and actually my personal favorite when it comes to the scythe claw is the ice body so ice body basically uh it was introduced in 1.6 uh, for Steam players that came out around Christmas time, and for console players that came out with the 1.7 update. So 1.6 and 1.7 released at the same time for consoles, which is why no one knew how good the meat skewer became until February 11th. But anyways, Ice Body, basically what happens is that you trigger it, and then you get coated with like a glaze ice look. It looks really cool. And then if you get hit, you have an area of effect freeze that uh, freezes all the enemies around you. And the cooldown is pretty long. I think it's like 30 seconds or something like that. And if you trigger it yourself, because you can trigger it yourself, uh, you'll have a shorter cooldown, I believe, 20 seconds. Uh, and this works really well for mobs because you can use the ice body, coat yourself in ice, and go up to a mob and either take a hit on purpose or by accident. 
whatever, whichever comes first, or you can trigger it yourself and then be able to get the scythe kills from there. Works great with the lease, elites, and with bosses, it's a little bit of an issue, but generally with bosses, freezing is tough, but there is utility with the ice body because if you, one, you don't get hit, like if you get hit while you have the ice body, you don't take any damage. That's incredibly important because uh, if you accidentally take a hit from something, um, it'll do a little bit of that freeze damage, but also at the same time, it may freeze the boss for a short period of time, which can allow you to escape, or they don't get frozen or they don't slow down, they're immune to the freeze or whatever, and then you can um, just not take a hit at that point. It works like a shield. It really, really does work like a shield, so I'm a big fan of it. And those are the skills. Um, other skills that you can use are also things like tonic, that'll uh, get your health back. Um, Vampirism is also really good. Giant's Whistle I didn't mention because I didn't use it in this particular run. But Giant's Whistle also works pretty well. Um, I think with Giant's Whistle, the one thing you want to remember is that you can only hit one enemy at a time. So I think Giant's Whistle is absolutely amazing. It can one-shot elites. It's phenomenal. But I think with the Scythe Axe, you're already going to be doing a lot of damage. So the skills that you have um, should really work more towards supporting it rather than being like a main source of damage like with the uh, Giant's Whistle. Mutations with Scythe are pretty standard. Uh, generally, Necromancy and Dead Inside are like the two main ones. Uh, you can also use stuff like Heart of Ice, which gives you cooldown on skills for slow down enemies. Uh, with that, you generally want a skill like a Ice Grenade or, or a Wolf Trap or something like that that'll trap an enemy or freeze an enemy or have the affix that says victims nearby slow down. I personally love Frostbite the most. Uh, for those of you who watched my Rhythm and Bazooki run, which I'll leave a card above, uh, basically I mentioned that Frostbite, when paired with the Victim Slowdown Nearby affix, um, basically the other enemies will slow down, and Frostbite does damage to slowed down or frozen or immobilized enemies, like additional damage. So what this means essentially is something very, very useful, but you may not think of immediately. So in these clips, you can see a bunch of kamikazes dying randomly. And you can see like money coming to me from above. That's the kamikazes dying from the frostbite. So the victims nearby are slowing down. But because of frostbite, those kamikazes die. And this is incredibly important with something like uh, the scythe claw and just any melee survival weapon. Because all of them have the victim slow by, uh, victim slow down nearby uh, affix. Or you can get them on most of them. I think you, I think you can get them on all of them. And kamikazes are often hard to hit on melee survival, so it's an incredibly useful um, mutation to have. And in general, because of the slowness of melee survival weapons, uh, with the exception of Rhythm and Bazooki and Flawless, uh, generally it's nice to be able to have more time to hit enemies and get those crits off with the Scythe Claw. So uh, generally, mutations, um, you're not going to take anything with the shields, obviously, so no, there's no blind faith because you can't run a shield. Uh, but you can take stuff like Gastronomy, double the effectiveness of food. Uh, you can take things such as, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, there's not much else you can take. Mutations are a little limited because of the fact that most um, survival mutations are shield-oriented. Um, you can also take things like Disengagement and, or Acceptance if you want. Um, you can take, uh, you can even take Instinct to the Master of Arms. That is 100% an option. Um... And I know in the past I've railed on acceptance, but that is also a completely okay uh, mutation, except especially with the uh, dead inside. So that is mutations in a nutshell. So that is the Scythe Claw in a nutshell. I think it's an incredibly powerful weapon just based off the damage by itself. So uh, I'm going to show you guys a build that my latest build... I got 40 in survival on 5 BC, and the right Scythe Claw uh, did 1.27 million damage on the crit. That is beyond words. I can't explain how ridiculous that even is. Um, so the thing about the Scythe Claw you need to remember is that it is an amazing weapon. Absolutely an S-tier weapon. But it also has that drawback in being slow. And I think it's incredibly important to remember to try to mitigate its drawbacks as much as possible. So using those skills 
is so, so important, which is why the skill section was the longest. Um, you really want to make sure that you don't take that much, that many hits from enemies. Um, in general, um, you want to be able to have stuff that can help support something like the Scythe Claw. Um, because that damage is no joke. And you want to be able to maximize that as much as possible. But thank you guys so much for joining me. I always appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to watch my content. I'm sure many of you got a lot of things going on. So it's always cool just to see you watch my videos and be up in the comments section. Uh, leave a comment suggesting what other guides you want me to do. I'm really trying to go in on these guides right now. Um, I got an oil grenade little showcase thing coming up. Showing what weapons and stuff are good with oil. Just as a general thing. Because I think oil is not talked about nearly enough. Um, I'm going to have something. I'm going to do a run that was requested to me. Based off the lightning bolt and spite sword. And how those two kind of work together in a colorless build. And I have some other things planned. But if you want me to do anything in particular absolutely let me know in the comments um you can follow me on instagram on twitter and on twitter uh the links in the description you can also dm me on reddit my username is miss array that is m-i-s-s-e-r-r-a-y you can dm me on there if you want and yeah thank you so much for joining me um hope you guys have a great one and i'll see you guys soon one day i woke up i didn't have shit I had to work hard just to grab this Blue faces stacked up, that's my fetish I'm ready, I'm ready for these benches They said I wouldn't make it, who asked you? I got brought into this life I didn't ask to I'ma make most of it all cause I had to You get money from your mama, I chase it because I had to